Matt Walsh is mad that he can't have a whole bunch of kids and get eight kills in Fortnite. I did not want to make this video. I did not want to make this video. I didn't want to do it, Matt. Why are you making me do it, Matt? Ah! But we have to. I'm from the future. Subscribe to me if you want to live. All right, let's talk. Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire is catching all kinds of hell and smoke from the gaming community. I feel obliged to make a video on this because I am the conservative-leaning, libertarian, free-thinking, conspiracy theorist gamer here on YouTube. If you didn't know that, I have news streams, I have gaming streams, okay? I've been a gamer since I was four years old. It's a gigantic part of my entire arc of life. I was not raised in church. All of my moral compass has come from being a serial protagonist in video games. Remember, no Russian. Mostly. Matt has made it very clear he's not a giant gamer. He's not a giant fan of gaming. He either directly or subtly talks shit about gaming all the time. It is what it is. Like everyone has their preferences. And here's the thing. There's no one I agree with on everything. And I would never expect you all to always agree with me all the time. But I will say there's been some very legitimate criticism and then maybe some not so legitimate criticism of Matt Walsh on this newest Gamergate scenario. So I'm going to break it down a little bit. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk some real harsh shit to Matt and the Daily Wire, like old school Xbox 360 lobby tongue lashing. That'll be at the very end though. So wait to the end, like the video, subscribe. If you've not subscribed already, but let's talk about it. A couple of days ago, Matt Walsh released a video called the dark side to the video game industry. In the video, he explains how there is crazy amount of wokeness and DEI built into a lot of these games, and it is exposed through some clips that are in his video that there is a lot of ESG money that is wrapped into the investment for creating some of these video games because they're so expensive to create. And so with that comes strings, and those strings are wokeify, diversify, Make them shitty, basically. He's completely right. The assessment is pretty good. I, I watched that whole video. It's a 20-minute video. You should watch it. But there's some things I disagree with. He's saying that video game journalists are worse than any other kind of journalist. That's just not true. That's just not true. Did you live through the pandemic? Like every propaganda media outlet dragging Trump for the last five years has acted as irresponsibly as the video game journalists have been. He also explains in the video how important the industry of video gaming is compared to several other industries. By revenue, the gaming industry is bigger than both the movie industry and the music industry combined. And for the past several years, it hasn't been especially close. The difference is consistently more than $100 billion per year. The money is huge because the demand is huge because people use that for their entertainment, like your boy here. So I will agree, moderation is important. If you spend 10 hours a day gaming, you're probably not going to develop many skills, get much work done, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. It's fine. Totally cool. The thing that annoys me is there's this stigma that gamers are lazy, incapable incels who, what, fall for woke ideology? There's a lot of millennials, a lot of Gen X, even a couple boomers. <laughs> Don't miss your shot, boy. I won't. You've been had by the Grandpa Gaming. 
who really enjoy the hell out of video games. After all, it's a good way to let off steam. It's always the people who binge seasons on Netflix, watch reality TV, scroll Instagram, and watch six football games a week that trash people who play video games. So for them, just go to hell. I mean, if you're a monk who doesn't watch TV, who reads a book a week, who does all that, and you're like, hey, there's a better way than playing video games. Sure, whatever, go ahead. That's enough of that. Now, some people say Matt Wall should stay in his lane and not cover gaming, not cover these news items. I completely disagree. I'm a free speech absolutist. I think everyone should cover anything they want all the time. And in this case, having this employee at EA Games subsidiary or whatever admit that she refuses to hire white people is a huge story. And I'm glad anyone and everyone highlights it because I made a video on it and a short about it. I shared it everywhere. It is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. This is why we kill people in video games. The de-stress because of shit like this. Unreal. And the 60,000 views I got on TikTok mean nothing compared to what some of these big names at these conservative or independent companies can get. So I want it to go out there. And I think Matt, despite not liking video games, is free to comment about them. He's totally free to comment. You ready for that ass whooping? But if you're going to comment, just know when you come into our house, when you come into the gamer sphere, you're going to catch them hands. You're going to get all the smoke. Gamers are smart. Gamers are ruthless. They are persistent. They remember shit. To be completely honest, a lot of the big red pill oh shit moments of my life happened in games. A lot of my distrust of the establishment came from games. When Shepard betrayed Ghost. That's one less loose end. Do you know what that did to me? When the Colonel in Metal Gear Solid 2 came to life and started telling me I should go outside? Raiden, turn the game console off right now. What did you say? The mission is a failure. Cut the power right now. What's wrong with you? Don't worry, it's a game. It's a game just like usual. You'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. Do you know what that did in here to my little brain? I was like, this game's becoming self-aware. I about shit my pants. And when I had to kill Lucy in Assassin's Creed. No. It is done. We don't need to talk about it. Anyway, if you're gonna come play with the big boys, you're gonna get whacked by the big boys. So here you go, Matt. Last June, Nick Merckx, the big gaming streamer, got canceled by Call of Duty Activision because he commented on Twitter against, against woke gender ideology for children. So they removed his skin pack, they canceled his ass. And guess what happened? I made a video. Gamers versus groomers, showing that whole thing of how it went down, showing how Dr. Disrespect said, screw this, I'm uninstalling the game. Showed how Tim the Tapman said, you know what? Take my skins too. I'm not doing this. And then I uninstalled the game after I just played it for the first time. I had a lot of fun, but no. In solidarity with Nick Merckx and all that was going on, I uninstalled the game, called it out, blasted it everywhere with my video. You know what you did, Matt? Do you know what you did? Two weeks later, you released the video. Matt Walsh tries and fails to play Call of Duty. You fucking played Call of Duty and shilled the game to your audience when we were boycotting it. And I, I got... <laughs> I got the receipts here. Here's my comment eight months ago on your video. Here it is. June 24th, 2023. Nick Merckx had his situation happen. 
June 8th, 2023. And here's my comment. This timing really reinforces the belief that the Daily Wire is full of controlled opposition shills that bend over for any corporation that throws money at them. There is a full-fledged boycott of Call of Duty by conservatives and gamers slash streamers alike. I made a video on the gamers versus groomers with all the details below. But seriously, what the fuck? You have a whole team. Obviously, someone in your circle knows about this. How much did COD slash Activision throw at the Daily Wire to make this? I didn't want to make this video. Between Ben Shapiro going off the deep end for Israel, both of you guys going crazy over the Social Security thing, which I get it. It's screwed. It's rough. But now, really? Like, that's the hill to die on right now? And then the constant disparaging remarks at gamers. Like, I don't care. Listen, you don't have to like it. You don't have to participate. But you're not going to talk all that shit all this time over a lot of videos, over a lot of tweets. This isn't like an un isolated incident. You've constantly thrown jabs at the gamers. So you're getting a jab back, a pretty good one. And I've seen some of your buddies saying, oh, all the loser gamers that don't have a girlfriend and don't, and they're jealous because you have kids and whatever. My wife is a gamer too. She's a better gamer than me. Keegan's gamer score is higher than mine. Sure. <laughs> like 20,000 higher than mine. <laughs> We're not losers. A lot of us have been learning and adapting and treating this whole digital freaking war that's happening to us as a game and trying to win, trying to beat this crazy shit that's going on. And I, I don't even know. I don't even know where to go with this. I'm done. But yes, Matt, please keep doing what you're doing. A lot of your takes are good, but if you're going to, if you're going to go swimming with the sharks, get ready for the teeth, man. I'm just saying, get ready for the teeth. Gamers talk smack. That's part of the game. That's part of the deal. It's the culture. Thick skin. Armadillo hide wrapped in Kevlar. And you got to match it if you're going to hang with us.